Hello guys, welcome to the first episode of RRC Model Productions channel. Today we have the UMX Whippet for our first episode. We have a very nice first airplane. This guy has been very much anticipated. We've been waiting almost four or five months for this guy. He was announced at the Nuremberg Toy, Toy Fair in Germany and now it's finally here after many setbacks and delays. I'm overall very impressed with the model straight out of the box. I haven't had a chance to fly it yet. I'm thinking I'll get out probably Sunday or Monday, and if not, then next weekend sometime. So I'll have a flight report for you once I get that. But for now, we're just going to talk about it straight out of the box. First thing I want to address straight out, uh, if you've been following the forum on RC groups for this, you'll know that a lot of people have been talking about these two wing attachment points on the fuselage. The first batch got into Europe way before it got to us because of backups in the port out in California. And I think their batch was a little bit different from ours because their rear mounting point, which is right here, you probably can't see it very well. But when you buy your with it, you'll know. I can hold it up to the camera and maybe you'll see it a little bit better there. Anyway, in Europe, the rear mounting point was moved back too far. So these screws didn't line up with the holes in the top of the wings. It was very hard to put them in, and they had to end up putting the back screws in at an angle like that. And with this glider, considering that all it's holding the swing on is four screws, and you're going to be whipping this very fast, you want your screws to be in perfectly. So I was a little bit concerned when I picked this up. I looked at it in the hobby shop. I always buy my models on there so that if there's a problem, I can swap it out immediately, not have to wait until the next time I can get back out. Because there is about, I probably not even quite a sixteenth of an inch gap on my model. So that did concern me a little bit, but I got home, I stuck the wing on, and it was no trouble. So some of the guys have been saying on the forums, if you see a gap, don't buy the model, swatch it, switch it out. If it's a big gap, switch it out. If it's a little gap, about like what's on mine, don't worry about it. It'll line up just fine. And the only problems you're really going to run into is the same as pretty much every other model from Horizon Hobby that I've dealt with. These screws are very soft screws and the hard points that they screw into are very hard plastic that has not been tapped out yet. So what that means is you're going to have to be very, very careful not to strip the screws out. If you put the carbon cup together, I know the floats were notorious for stripping the screws because that was very hard plastic with very soft screws and it was not tapped out. What I found works well and what I did with this model is you screw it in about three threads and then you back it all the way out and then you go back in three more threads past what you already did and then back it out and that just takes some of the stress off of the threads and off the head of the screw and it lets you go in a lot easier. You won't strip the screw out and then you cut the threads very nicely. Uh, a couple other little things about this model straight out of the box. A lot of guys have been noticing and I have this problem. Uh, one of the two control surfaces or both are going to be lined up improperly, so that's just a matter of taking your pliers and squeezing this little bend right here. Oh, I can't see it too well, so I'll hold it up to the camera for you. Just squeezing that or opening it up a little more with a pair of pliers. Get it lined up and then get it all bound up and checked out and everything will work just fine for you. The receiver and servo board is that. That's off of a champ and it is just hiding right under this little hatch right here which is covered up by this guy that I just popped off. It's a hard plastic nose cone and that also covers the 25C 150 milliamp battery. It goes right there. Let me just double check my numbers on that. Yes it is 150. Here's the battery right there. It does not come with a battery. does not come with a charger. It's a Bionfly basic so not getting everything you need but if you're going to be buying this kind of model you probably have everything you need in the shop at home. Uh, personally, I'm very glad they put this hard nose cone on there because that's going to help protect the foam from rough grass or asphalt that you're going to be landing on if you don't catch it every time. I've set up a custom mix on the tail because whipping this, why we call it the whip it, I'm right-handed, so I'll be throwing it like this. It's going to want to balloon upwards and to the left. So my mix is a few degrees down and a few degrees to the right to hopefully straighten out. I've noticed this model from watching other people and from what other people are saying. When you start throwing it harder, it's going to want to come up like this and loop all the way around. That's going to kill your altitude and 
not be very good for the airplane either in the long run. So I'll show you my mix. It's very minimal right now and I haven't flown it yet so I haven't adjusted it right now. It's about 5 degrees each way. I have it set up to my switch A on my DX6 Black and I have a voice command set up so I know which mode I'm in when I'm flying it. So I will show that to you now. Probably can't even hardly see it. I set it very low so that when I start out, if I'm launching it, it's too much, it's not going to crash and break on me. Because there's no harm in having it too little for now and stepping it up, but if you have too much and you wreck it, then obviously that's the problem. Like I said, I set up a voice command so that if there is any doubt when you're flying, if you have it in the right mode, you'll know because he's talking to you. That's pretty much it for this model on the bench right now. Um, please like, subscribe, comment to the videos, tell me what you think, let me know what you want to see. I plan to do some shop tips in this YouTube channel, some more reviews, some flying stuff. i got to get a better camera before I do any real flying things. This is just filming off of my laptop, so it's probably not going to be very good quality. And if you've noticed, that's the E-Flight Micro Stearman behind me there. I picked that guy up today. It's a real gem. I've flown it a little bit, and it's just incredible. I'll be doing a review on that shortly, so be watching for that. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in, and that's all for now.